Nisi, Matthew, how are you guys doing? Just getting, bring you guys just a few minute um, update here um, on the fish room. So went ahead and transferred over from the stock tank. Uh, so this is actually housing the larger discus. And then this one is um, empty right now. Uh, obviously besides uh, some plants and driftwood and so forth. But as far as livestock, um, fish speaking, it is empty. So of course we have the uh, gold severman here, um, just transferred over. So this disc is a little stressed out. He's just being a baby hiding at the bottom, but he'll bounce back. Um, all the other discus in here is not showing up the greatest because of lighting. So I apologize about that. So uh, Kang Lee, if you happen to come across this, you need to get a hold of me, man, so we can figure out which ones uh, you would like me to send your way. So. Uh, I got the ghost knife, which is right here in this piece of uh, chalk. And these are the lucipennis back here. You can see, uh, if you check out my video yesterday, uh, wound care, I went ahead and went through. It does look quite bad, but it will get worse before it gets better. Um, however, based on the method that I showed, in my experience, I'm confident that it will not get any worse. So it's not going to seed itself any further into the body, but... Uh, by looking at it, you would think, man, that guy doesn't look good. So, again, oftentimes it does get a little worse before it gets better um, from the outer appearance. But as far as internally, um, as long as you provide good husbandry and so forth, uh, good regimen of water changes and overall water quality, you don't have to add any additional medication based on the method uh, that I went ahead and showed yesterday. So these guys are... Um, doing well. There's just a couple of them. Again, the uh, the Lake Tanganyika and Cynodonis back there, which isn't going to show up the greatest, um, but you can see them back there swimming. This is a smaller juvenile ghost knife. Again, uh, you guys have been following the channel long enough. I do have a larger one that's pushing about 14 to 15 inches in my South and Central American cichlid tank. So these guys do not keep them in multiple groups because they will electrocute one another. So just kind of a quick tip, I guess, for uh, for the um, black ghost knife. So even though you may not um, see it with the eye, but uh, they are essentially electrocuting one another if you keep them in multiple groups. So over time, um, you will stress them out and they're not going to essentially live or potentially live a uh, full life because you're just constantly, you know, if somebody was electrocuting you, Constantly you probably get a little stressed out um, and so forth, but yeah So got some java moss in here um, uh, Various other plants so a bunch of driftwood um, So I'll probably do something little with it again. This is strictly like quarantine room grow out room So I don't care too much as far as displays because again um, I'm not going to put a lot of time into doing aquascaping um, due to the fact if we plan on moving hopefully here in the future, uh, what is the point because I'm going to have to break everything down. But I definitely will, once we move, I can guarantee I will get into hardscaping and aquascaping because it's something I really have a passion about doing. Um, and that's what this hobby is all about. I mean, it's really awesome to, to do things like that. Um, so the larger... Let me see if I can bring one of these guys up for you. Um, I'm going to put the phone down real quick.
So there you go. Absolutely stunning. Um, so yeah. All right. So a bunch of a bunch of um, smaller uh, juvenile size, um, uh, you know, discus in there. Let's see if we can get them. Uh, see if we can get them feeding here. Um, so again, those are the discus I obtained uh, from Sashimi Whiskey. So Jimmy, so definitely check out. Um, if you haven't, make sure you guys are uh, supporting. Uh, his channel as well. Again, he is the editor. Um, I know most of you guys in here right now know, but anybody going later on and watching um, right now, uh, he's in the process. That's why he blessed so many with some awesome setups and tanks and livestock and driftwood and plants and and inverts and you name it. Um, a lot of different stuff. Uh, bless the, the fish fam. Um, can't put it in words uh, to describe, but he will be moving out to, which is going to be sad to see, but I'm very excited for him. Um, he'll be going up to, uh, over to Washington to, um, because right now he is the editor for Corey, uh, McElroy at Aquarium Co-op. So these are the beef heart flakes, which is what, um, Jimmy was feeding. So that's what I'm going to spoil these guys with, um, and so forth. But yeah, so let's see if we can... Get them to come up here. Again, they just got transferred over. Um, I got three tanks going on down here. Uh, these are the, also the three tens I obtained from Jimmy. Um, but uh, nothing going on in these right now. Uh, there is sponge filters in here. I got I ran out of pumps, so I got to get um, more air pumps. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Just kind of trying to rearrange things, condense down. Um, I don't know if I'm going to condense either one of these kiddie pools down. I'll probably leave these guys set up. Again, uh, we got various um, guppy and guppy fries in here. Uh, really stunning ones. I can show you here. So for any guppy lovers out there, um, not sure how well it's going to show up, but you can see babies. There's babies all over the place. Uh, she's squared up completely. She's ready to release. Um, there's her friend over there, her sister. She's ready to uh, to release soon. Surprised she hasn't already. But um, these guys are absolutely beautiful. Look at look at these ones here. And then uh, this is our daughter's, so for you there, Nisi, this is the Aranda, um, that she's going to end up going into a tank, um, I think right up here. i got to pick up another one of the 20 longs, but I think we're going to end up, um, uh, or a 20, I think it's actually a 20 tall. So i got to see what I have available. i got a bunch of different tanks in storage, but um, we might just set something up. Or leave her here. She's she's doing well. She's liking it. She's enjoying life. She wants to bite my finger right now. Um, she's like, if you keep putting my finger your finger in there, I'm gonna use it as a snack. So of course they would eat. Um, whoop, yep. <laughs> she got a little bit of attitude. Oh yeah. Bite it. Bite it. Bite it. Bite it. I'm gonna have to put a little ball in here for her. See, see if I can train her to play with a ball. So, um, got some other, uh, I think there's some sore tails in here. Um, various um, other live bears, uh, bettas. Um, got my son's betta that he got for free. That will actually be going to his tank, um, just for a few days because, um, obviously school, I can't believe it. Um, basically he's on a school retreat right now, about an hour and a half north, but, uh, that's why we haven't introduced the beta yet, or betta. I got to keep reminding myself, it's not beta, it's betta. Um, but yeah, 
You can see it right there. Um, Dave at uh, Something Fishy Incorporated in Cleveland, Ohio hooked the kiddos up with uh, free bettas, uh, which was pretty pretty cool. So he decided to go with this one here. Um, So yeah, uh, let's see, of course I have the self coin crayfish in here, I got some Ancestress Placos, uh, these guys coexist well, there's a bunch of fry in here, um, really unknown fry at this point because there's a lot of fry um, that were in uh, Jimmy's tanks when we were breaking them down and bagging it up. So it's going to be cool to see uh, there's even more fry in this tank, um, so it's going to be really cool to see actually what what the fry is going to end up being um just due to the standpoint we don't necessarily know yet um you know we can make our guesses and speculations but until they really um get at a more mature size to be able to definitively tell um so i'm excited about that so i'm not mixing anything in that uh, kitty pool that guppy tank i'm keeping those guys strictly guppies because i don't want anything else crossed um or get confused with anything so right now um, we'll see what type of lines and so forth we can get out of it before I start offering anything on the website. Um, it, it's just a, it's a fun project to do as a family. That's the only reason why I got the guppies. Um, try to get the wife and the kiddos more involved in breeding, especially with the discus. Um, so I'm confident those larger, um, uh, the, what is it, the blood pigeon discus, th those guys will start breeding. Um, and so forth but uh, yeah they're actually you can't see it right now but they're cleaning um, their uh, spawning cone right now and it's hard to tell because I've disrupted the water and so forth um, let's go take a look so I showed you guys the elusive pennants are going to Lucas um, let's see so over here let me flip you guys around a um, little bit quieter in this room, um, but these are the Celestial Pearl Daniels that are going to be going to Priscilla. So those guys are doing absolutely phenomenally well. Um, they're loving life in there and, and so forth. You can tell when you're in the fish room, a bunch of algae, snails, um, and so forth. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Um, lots of shrimp. Again, these are on our website. Got more shrimp. These are the snowballs. I'm not going to go through every one of these tanks. We just went through that yesterday. We have some yellow Neocaridina up there. Um, you can tell that she's saddled up and, and so forth. But yeah, I need more females. Um, but they've been hard to come by. Uh, the uh, the yellows uh, right now. Any, any good lines? Because I know uh, Lucas... Um, and, and Rob, they're pretty low, so I need to get uh, more females once uh, once I can. Um, lost my train of thought, but uh, yeah, once I actually get some. And then, uh, last but not least, these are the uh, pears. Uh, it's gonna be hard to tell, so let me flip you guys around here. Um, these are a type of uh, killifish, which are your blue galaris. These guys are absolutely stunning. They're actually kind of more rare, um, and these guys fetch a pretty penny. So these guys are not cheap, um, especially if you can get uh, good lines. So I'm keeping a pair and then sending the pair out to V-Stag. Um, so again, Jimmy, uh, much love to you, bro. Hooked us up with those as well, so I'm excited to get those guys, hopefully in the future, um, breeding as well. So definitely lots of breeding projects um the mycogeophagus and blue ram cichlids are doing uh really really well um these guys have been uh definitely pairing off uh you can see the male and the female there um keeping that area clean so i'm hoping i can actually get on video for you guys uh, if they end up uh, starting to uh, distribute the eggs and once the male fertilizes i'll typically leave it in there for 
12 to 24 hours after I can confirm that all the eggs were fertilized, I'll go ahead and remove the eggs and at that point I'll do video. I uh, might even bring you guys live, um, just depending on if I can catch it at the right time, of how I go about um, rearing and growing out the fry. I do recommend if you're really trying to be successful, you can let them parent raise, but my experience, it is uh, quite a bit more difficult. Um, they oftentimes uh, either fungus over, uh, even if they get to a uh, free swimming state, they'll generally end up uh, getting eaten. Um, so you can utilize other things in there like dither fish and stuff like that if you wanted to, but I would just recommend pulling the fry, keep these as a species only tank and, and so forth. But yeah, I used to breed really nice lines um, I guess I'll pat myself on the back, but that was quite a few years ago um, And then the market Just kind of got out of breeding these guys um, in our area and uh, so excited about um, uh, They were one of my favorite dwarf cichlid uh, in the hobby And again a whole nother group over here in this these are 220 longs right now um, And uh, so yeah of course, the Labidochromus in here uh, might do something kind of cool with this uh, down the road. I'm not sure yet. I do want to, um, these guys are on the website as well. Really stunning color um, and uh, and so forth. But yeah, I will uh, end up keeping 20 or 30 of them. I'm basically aquascape this tank and they look absolutely stunning um, in a group. And I would just keep these guys uh, as, a, as a specific species only tank with this particular line. Uh, this is the African cichlid tank here, which is a 90 gallon. Um, this is on a continuous drip system as well as the other one over there with the uh, juvenile labs. Um, but uh, yeah, the glass is dirty. Uh, wasn't really planning on coming on here, but uh, I don't mind. Hopefully you guys don't mind. I don't pay attention a whole lot to cleanliness of the glass. We don't get a lot of people over here anyways. Um, but when I actually do a video that I end up editing and doing a more in-depth walk around so forth Of course, I'll make sure that the glass is clean to better show you guys But that's the male right there and then uh, you got the female lab So these are the parents to the ones I just showed you um, In the 60 gallon. So this is on a Sun Sun 304 B model canister filter, uh, which I absolutely love I've used those for a long time um, And uh, that's got a continuous drip in it as well um, you can see the uh, the overflow here, which is ran on a, um, a, a Tom model. Um, this is an aqua lifter, and uh, um, so yeah, that's an AW uh, 20 model, and I highly recommend utilizing one of these if you're using any type of PVC overflow, just as an added backup security. Um, and then down here is the sump, and everything is uh, pumped up. Um, popped out through the ceiling and then back into the other part of the fish room and our maintenance room uh, into the floor drain. So of course we have the ghost knife back here, which everybody loves a ghost knife. Uh, of course you're always gonna have some controversy. I love the blood parrots. They do wonderful um, as a kind of a community set up here with your uh, South Central American cichlids. So you have your Severums, um, got the ghost knife. I've kept a uh, Plyptris uh, Senegalis in here before, which is like your um, uh, bitch here or bite here. and then I have the uh, Pictus catfish here. This is a spotted species, and this one um, is pushing. If I measure it and took it out, it's always deceptive when you're looking through glass and trying to measure things. But that guy's got to be pushing over a foot. Um, the ghost knife has got to be at least 14 inches. Had that guy for quite some time. Uh, he's the mascot of. Uh, of uh, the fish room uh, for sure. So let me grab some food here and get uh, him out so you guys can actually see. So you'll, if you guys pay attention to that corner over there, you'll see him come out in just a moment. Um, and uh, these guys are all very personable. If I put my hand in there, they're not gonna try to bite me. They'll let me pet them, they'll feed out of my hand. Um, it takes some time, so just be patient. You'll see I don't have any, um, uh, what you would say, like a knife tube is what I call it. So basically like a clear, like acrylic style tube uh, for your knife fish um, so you can at least see. 
and uh, you can make your own they're quite simple to do I used to have it in there as I was training this guy um, but you can see there's absolutely no um, structure he does hang out up here often but he will come out uh, they tend to be more nocturnal these are a blind species um, so they technically can't really see but they have uh, excellent um, sense of smell and sensitivity so again um, just to reiterate do not put more than one uh, in a tank because they will uh, electrocute one another then right here is the blue dreams um, so again another breeding project uh, let's see if any of these guys are holding yet. They're still putting on some size. These guys are doing absolutely phenomenally well. Of course, we have some Subwasser Tang here. This is the micro version of Subwasser Tang. And then I uh, got some water sprite, uh, some Bacopa. I got some Pothos or Pothos in there. I have some mystery snails. A banana plant, which was thriving, but after I put it in here, um, I haven't really done too much with this tank the way I look at shrimp. Uh, as in my experience breeding specifically Neocaridina for over 10 years uh, less is better so just leave the tank alone let it do, let it do, let it do its thing um, minimal water changes you really shouldn't have to do any water changes basically at all um, let the plants and so forth act as the, uh, a good form of uh, filtration there and then I just run on a sponge filter in the back um, and down here uh, we have some endlers. So, got a breeding group of endlers. So, I'm excited to get these guys breeding. There's also, not sure if it's going to show up or not. That is a Lucipenis. Um, uh, a little bit different variant there, but um, uh, that is a Lake Tanganican. So, again, those guys are quite peaceful, but those are just juvenile. So once these um, start growing out as well, then I'll go ahead and uh, and start breeding uh, breeding those guys. Um, also, I do have a larger uh, pair. They don't typically get too large, maybe like three or four inches, so they do tend to stay a little bit smaller. Um, these are the Ancestrous Chocolate. This is a group uh, breeding group, so if anybody's interested at all. Um, so these guys are just pretty much been in their own uh, tank and uh, in love and life so um, I got a group uh, a trio in there and anytime I typically ship uh, you'll always find that I hook people up with one or two extra um, of any one species uh, depending on my inventory and stock levels I mean if you're talking I'm bringing something that's of high value and more difficult to breed of course I'm not gonna be able to financially and I wouldn't expect anybody to do that um, but when you're talking something you know in the 10 or 20 dollar range or something like that um at least for me uh talking specifically livestock anything that you see on the website that i breed i always add in i i don't publicly put it out there because it's not really an obligation that i have to do it's just something i like to do just in case in the unfortunate event if there was any die-offs or something like that but knock on wood i've had zero die-offs in the time that i've shipped through the years um just because of the amount of time i put in the shipping and so forth but things do happen um that's just the, the the fact of life i mean sometimes it's it's out of our control but um just kind of throwing that out there to you guys so um expect whatever it is that you end up buying at least right now from a website I'll always add in one or two extra um of whatever you you order um and again just to clarify i'm talking specifically with livestock so not not talking dry goods or anything like that um, I'll try to usually hook you guys up with a decal um, anytime you guys order something as well um, but yeah so this is a 40 breeder here um, this right here is on a continuous drip changing several volumes of water every day which I highly recommend this just goes to validate just so you guys can see here this is a chocolate strain of your ancestors bushy nose placo so if you take a look in comparison at my finger so basically coming up here to my first knuckle those are the same age and I only did this just to prove and validate um, that with a continuous drip and I'm not doing anything different uh, between this 20 long and that 40 gallon they're almost identical as far as TDS pH water parameters and so forth the only difference is the fact that I'm doing large volume water changes on this and I'm doing manual ones on this so if you can see up here, these are exactly from the same clutch 
and um, and parents as the one I just showed you. You can see a huge difference in size. So don't be afraid. Um, and that goes for a lot of different things. If you've been in the hobby long enough and you've been keeping fish, I talked about this earlier today um, on uh, Tim's Animals on his live stream. That was a question that was brought up. So I go way more in depth on that. So definitely check out his channel um, if that was uploaded, which I'm pretty sure it was. It was like an eight hour live stream or something like that. But you would have to catch me at the tail end. I go more into the theory and the thought process that I have when it comes to uh, specifically doing uh, consistent large water i'm not talking auto water change i'm talking continuous drip because there is a difference in that so i'm not going to go into all that right now i have talked about it on several different occasions so you can always check out um other live streams and videos and stuff like that uh, i wish i could remember i just very forgetful uh, at this uh, place in my life now that I'm at so used to remember all that stuff I need to do a better job of writing it down then that way I can tag and be able to link certain things that I mentioned on live streams and other videos uh, so that that is a flaw of mine that's something I need to uh, be more aware of and that way all you guys got to do after this uploads is simply go to uh, the description click a link and it'll bring you uh, to that specific video um let's see here we've been going on about 30 minutes i didn't plan on pushing it much past that that was kind of my uh my tentative goal so i want to be able to do more of these um just makes my life a little bit easier so i can still maintain uh putting out videos for you guys again i want to thank each and every one of you guys very very much for all the continued support and uh helping this channel grow to where it's at today uh, because without you guys that wouldn't be possible and for anybody that wasn't aware uh, this channel did hit a thousand subs yesterday and that I give 100% credit uh, to you guys so much much love to the fish fam I'm gonna go ahead and pull up chat here um, right off from my PC so I can take a look and answer any questions that I have so um, let me know what you guys think. Again, I, I will end up doing edited versions of what I just showed you, uh, so things are a little bit more in depth, but I'm finding, I'm kind of getting inspired. I'm seeing other people kind of uh, utilize um, the live stream function to go about as quote unquote acting as kind of like their video of the week. Um, just stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you guys have notification bell on because uh, I do try to frequently upload uh, videos. Um, and only as the channel grows and so forth and find time and what have you, obviously um, I can put more time and effort into the quality of the videos, the editing aspect of the videos. So hopefully you guys will see some good changes um, in different kind of formats and layouts uh, with the channel here um, on YouTube. So I definitely look at Jimmy from Sashimi Whiskey and, and Corey McElroy from Aquarium Co-op as a mentor to me to help grow um, and establish um, YouTube uh, what have you so definitely make sure you guys check out uh, Corey's um, other channel which is linked in his channel and I can also link that after this upload so you can make a, your life a little bit easier but he goes in great great detail um, on business related items and especially with um, would how to grow a YouTube channel so the information that's presented there um, is just a, a huge huge uh, blessing to me and I think uh, so many different uh, other individuals if I'm speaking on their behalf um, really does a phenomenal job I definitely look at Corey as one of those individuals that has definitely inspired me uh, amongst many don't get me wrong um, to really start driving hard into uh, YouTube uh, so Island Queen says hello everyone. Matthew said hi Island. Kyle's Wild World. What kind of rack are those on the tens? I will link that Kyle. So let me write that down. Uh, I picked that one up. It's about $30 on sale at Menards and they work phenomenally well. Just make sure you anchor them to the wall. Uh, I want to say each shelf holds uh, about 700 gallons or something like that or 700 not 700 gallons 700 pounds um, Yeah it wouldn't hold 700 gallons keep in mind um every if i recall correctly every volume um gallon of water is about eight and three quarter pounds so if you did the math 
um, kind of give you an understanding of when you're looking at weight distribution and so forth. Just keep in mind water volume is right around eight and a half, eight and three quarter pounds, and that doesn't include your decor, your your hardscape, your tank itself, stand, uh, so on and so forth. So I am writing that down for Kyle right now so I can add that specific length from Menards to that specific rack. All right, laugh out loud. I love the kiddie pool ponds inside. You gotta love them. Just got my rainbows in from Bob. I'm gonna have to check that out, Kyle. Uh, Nisi said, oh, looks um, not spelled right. I have no idea, Nisi, but I will concur with you. Um, I don't, I will butcher that name if I try saying it. So thank you, Nisi. Michael Hoffman's in the house. How you doing, Michael? Goldfish do very well in ponds and pools. If I had the space, I'd do it too. Uh, my angel fish used to bite my finger, Matthew said. <laughs> a little uh, stinkers for sure. Uh, Michael said, I am the only one seeing a uh, frozen video. I'm not sure there, Michael. Uh, looking good on my end, but again, I was streaming from my phone, so would not surprise me um, if uh, it does lag. There's not anything I can do about that. Uh, trust me, you are preaching to the choir. Uh, that's probably one of the, the only negatives I receive on this channel is uh, due to the the video quality um, but due to the cost of internet I'm not going to be investing at this point um, in any other I only pay ten dollars a month for internet and I don't know of anybody on this planet that pays anything cheaper than that even though my upload speeds and so forth are right around 1.2 uh, megabytes but um, I'll take it so if it's good enough to do live streams on top of Netflix and YouTube and we don't have cable or satellite um, you know, I, I'm going to stick with it. I'd rather invest that money into, um, you know, uh, other things. Uh, so, uh, sorry about the noise in the background, guys. I'm trying to look at chat here, and I have notifications coming up on my phone, so I know that that can be annoying. Um, Jeremy is a guppy lover now, Alan said. Uh, Michael Hoffman says, switching my work computer instead of phone, and it's good now, okay? Short and anxious in the house. Priscilla is finally getting her Daniel. That's awesome, short. Thank you so much, too. I know that you've been busy with work and stuff, so thank you for the comments and that. They mean a great deal, short and anxious. I really do appreciate it. Um, uh, Chris is in the house. How are you doing, Chris? KG Cichlid said hello. Phil. Um, NM Aquatics said, hey, Jeremy, Jeff here. Was wondering which state are you living in, if you don't mind me saying. No problem here. I am in Michigan, so I am in the Grand Rapids area in Michigan. We are part of the uh, Grand Valley Aquarium Club, which is actually where Corey McElroy from Aquarium Co-op will be coming in October, so it's going to be cool to actually meet up with him uh, again and, and talk, and I know that he's going to be talking about uh, his, um, I want to say the Ambu Puffer, and probably just Puffers in general, so I'm excited to, to learn uh, way more about uh, Puffers. Um, let's see here. Jennifer, how you doing? Relaxio, how you doing, Relaxio? Um, Relaxio said, hey, Kyle, you doing unboxing? from Bob, so let's see here. All right. Down the wormhole says, hello, everyone. Chris said, don't forget to sub. We need 500 more t-shirts. Sergeant tanks are awesome. Check the link. Thank you so much, Chris. It mean, uh, means a great deal. Blood pairs are my husband's favorite fish so far, Nisi said. That's awesome, Nisi. If I ever get over your way, Nisi, I would love to uh, to hook your you guys up with uh, one of the blood parrots. So, um, Matthew said, long before I was a truck driver, I used to work two fast food jobs on the Black Friday. Didn't sleep for 36 hours. Yep, um, I finally just got about an hour or two sleep uh, last night. But yeah, I was running on uh, no sleep for uh, 72 hours. About two hours of sleep uh, since Friday. So let's see here. But I don't sleep well to begin with anyway, so it's not like it's a big, big change for me. But going that long without having sleep, I mean, you're talking sleep deprivation, health issues, and everything else. So make sure you guys try to get your sleep. Um, a parrot is a mix between goldfish. Um, if you're talking about the blood parrot, uh, that is a hybrid between your Midas and Red Devil Cichlid. Cichlid um, said, uh, black ghost knives are cool. I always uh, see 30 or 40 of them in the tank at my local fish store. They don't care much either, though. 
Um, yeah, KG cichlids, I notice that oftentimes I don't think people understand the background. I've kept them for a very, very long time. And that information is relayed from uh, individual I would take um, as an expert in the field um, where I obtained that information quite a few years back because uh, that was a question that I had brought up to him um, way back, um, don't even know, several years ago because I noticed the same thing myself, but I noticed just by observing certain behaviors of fish and so forth that I would recommend um, everybody and just pay attention. You can really learn a lot about your fish just by paying attention to the behaviors, their demeanor and everything else. It just looked like they were stressed to me and um, that's when it was uh, reiterated and confirmed due to the fact that they also sent off a, like an electric uh, cution, um, where they are electrocuting one another if you keep multiple in a tank. Let's see here. Um, sorry about this, guys. I'm just, it does that to me every once in a while. The chat will. Um, blood parrots are a cute fish regardless of controversy. Yeah, they have personality. That's why I like them. They're cute in their own way. Uh, sorry, not in chat much. Nisi said, it's end of the month at work, which means report time. No problem. Nisi Matthews, uh, first week of June. Uh, snakes for him. Department of Transportation inspections all week long. Yeah, that can't be any fun. Dwayne Kitchell's in the house. How you doing, Dwayne? Best to have content and live stream. All right. Carlos, DBK's in the house. How you doing, Carlos? Dion's in the house. What's going on, Dion? Congrats again, my man, on your 1,000 subs. So make sure you go check out uh, Dion. Check out everybody in here. Um, Jesus are our favorite people. Helps that a lot. Uh, my back home friends or teachers. Yep, definitely much respect to uh, each one of you guys. Still wait, waiting for Tim's updates on his water. Yeah, I think he ended up uh, going to sleep, DPK. I know that he was up all night. Um, per Cichlid's in the house. How you doing? Kang Lee's in the house. How you doing, Kang Lee? I'm not sure if you've seen those uh, discus or not. Um, they are in a glass tank. So after this uploads, Kang Lee, let me know. Um, I would love to uh, let, have you let me know which ones you would like so I can get those sent out to you next week. Uh, Zachary Aquatics is in the house. Sharing this link, Dion said. Thank you so much, Dion. I'm going to be heading off from here myself, so um, I am falling a little bit behind here in chat, but just trying to scroll through to make sure I don't uh, miss much of anything, but I do got to get back to it. But I wanted to just chime in and just give you guys a few updates on what's going on in the fish room because I know that that's been something that's... Uh, uh, them being asked uh, here. Um, down the wormhole said I can never hear Tank, just see him talking. Not sure what's going on, um, but uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, let's see here. Thank you so much, Nisi. Nisi went ahead and posted a link to our website. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm going to leave this up for a couple of minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I'll let you guys look at the fish. You guys can um, go ahead and add uh, just a couple more comments if you want to. You can go ahead and also, uh, after this uploads, um, check out all the links I'm going to be adding. And then go ahead and uh, make sure um, that uh, you guys uh, check out the website if you get some time. Definitely have lots of livestock, dry goods, and so on, so forth on there. So much love to each and every one of you guys. Like I said, um, I got to get back to it, but I will go ahead and uh, leave this up for just a couple of minutes here, um, and uh, I'll try to get to you guys' questions. But it'll be through um, communication in the comments after this uploads. So hopefully that makes sense. So, much, much love. 
remember stay encouraged keep on keeping on happy fishing and we will talk to you guys on the next one All right, guys, I said I would leave it up for a couple of minutes, but one thing I want to show you um, is right here, this is just a prime example of why you should always have a ground fall circuit interrupter. I've talked about this on numerous occasions. Oh, what was in here? Yeah, that was an air pump, because I noticed on our kitty ponds here um, that my sponge filter is no longer running. And right now, I'm, this is complete disarray. I'm trying to get everything reorganized. And get out all the lines i mean this is just a redneck uh daisy chain together i mean everything's just in a complete disarray um doing a lot of consolidation and so forth but that's why if you look all the way down there i have these on our website everybody should have one of these that will trip it's going to save your life it'll save the fish's life i've had i can't tell you on how many occasions um All right, sorry about that, you guys. I'm not sure if you lost me there for a second, but um, if you, I always, anytime, this is just normal maintenance. Um, so, like at a job, if you go in and you have to do like an evaluation, if you, let's say, you're in a retail store or something like that, you got to do your uh, your weekly and monthly and daily checklist and stuff like that. Um, just make sure your hands are sanitized. I just use regular hand sanitizer, none of that foo foo stuff. Um, you know, you don't have to have any lavender or anything in it. And just, I, I prefer that over using soap. Uh, it's just me. But if you put your hand in the tank and you feel like you're being electrocuted, uh, what do you think that's doing to the fish? You're going to have some type of um, issue uh, with your cord. It could be a lot of times a heater. Um, the easiest way to check that 
is you put your hand in there and you just simply start disconnecting. I would start with your heater and then if you have like a hang on filter or something like that, anything with a cord obviously that's providing electricity that's making contact with your, your water in your tank is just simply start unplugging the stuff and then that will tell you um, as you're feeling. So obviously carefully unplug it, put your hand in there and if it goes away, um, then you now identified which one is shorting out on you, get rid of it. Um, don't be using it. Um, and I usually find that with heaters um, over other things. So, and speaking of heaters, I gotta, I'm completely out of them, so I gotta order more. But in the meantime, I gotta run to my local fish store. Um, that's what happens when you sell all your heaters. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm completely out. All right, but officially now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I didn't uh, miss anything, but I am going to um, be hopping off from here. Uh, I have a question about the plants, if you have time and can find it, Nisi said, in your comment section. Okay, Nisi, I will get to it. Um, all right, I think a lot of y'all probably already split, but, um, yeah, with that being said, you guys, uh, much love to each and every one of you, and we will talk to you guys on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.